In a previous video, I showed the custom flight controller program that I built for Raspberry Pi and RC Plane. The program uses computer vision to identify the horizon. PID controllers take the input from the horizon detector and actuate the servos to maintain level flight and execute turns. The GitHub link is in the description. If you're interested, take a look. In this video, I'm going to explain the hardware components I use to build the autopilot system. If you're interested in developing your own systems for RC Plane, this video will be a good starting point. In my next video, I'll explain the software side of the system and provide some simple starter code. For now, let's start with the basic pieces of hardware that you'll need. First, you'll need an airplane. I won't say too much about this because just about any airplane will do. I like to do stuff with computer vision, so I try to avoid planes with propellers on the nose, since the propeller interferes with the camera. I mostly use an Aero Scout, which has the propeller on the back. I've also used a homemade foam board plane called the Guinea Pig. It has two engines and can carry a decent payload, so it's a good option too. Next, you need a Raspberry Pi. I use Raspberry Pi 4 because that's what I already had, but other versions should work well too. Raspberry Pi 4 is probably a bit overpowered, so if I were to do this again, I might consider something smaller, like a Raspberry Pi Zero. I recommend investing in a good transmitter and receiver. Entry-level models would work, but the higher-end transmitters are highly programmable, so you'll have a lot more flexibility in how the switches are set up and how data is transmitted to the receiver. You'll also have the ability to receive telemetry from your receiver, which is something that cheaper equipment generally can't do. I use the RadioMaster TX16S, and it's worked great for this project. For my receiver, I use the FR Sky X8R. It has an SBUS port, which allows me to get 16 channels of control input to the Raspberry Pi with only a single wire. Cheaper receivers don't have SBUS ports, so you'd have to run wires off of each channel and connect them to the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins. You'll probably only get six channels, and you might not even have that many available GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi. So this option is not ideal. Earlier versions of my system used a cheap receiver, so it is possible, but I found it to be limiting and I wouldn't recommend it. All right, let's dive into the setup. The first challenge is powering the Raspberry Pi while it's on the plane. You could hook up a battery pack like this one, but they're rather heavy. Depending on what plane you're using, it might not even be possible to get this off the ground. The best solution is to use the same LiPo battery that powers the plane to also power the Raspberry Pi. I purchased a buck converter for this purpose. The buck converter regulates the voltage and provides a steady 5 volts for the Raspberry Pi. I soldered this Y splitter which takes power from the battery and shares it between the plane and the Raspberry Pi. I used XT60 connectors because this is standard for most LiPo batteries. Power is supplied to the Raspberry Pi by USB-C, so I soldered a USB cable to the other end of the buck converter. Next, we'll plug in the electronic speed control. This is a standard part of any RC plane. It hooks up to the battery and powers the receiver and motor. I'm going to skip hooking up a motor and just focus on the receiver. ESCs connect through the throttle channel, which on my receiver is channel 3. This is pretty standard, but some receivers use different channels, so you'll want to check this before you start plugging things in. Now we need to get signal from the receiver to the Raspberry Pi. I used female-to-female -female jumper cables to make this connector. It's very similar to a standard servo wire, but it only has the signal and ground wires. The power wire has been removed. The ends that plug into the Raspberry Pi are separate, so you'll have flexibility in which GPIO pins you use. The GPIO pins will also be outputting signals to the servos, so let's set up the servos. I made another special connector for driving the servos. This connector powers the servos from the receiver, but takes signal from the Raspberry Pi. There are power pins on the Raspberry Pi that you could use to power the servos, but this is generally discouraged because it is not stable. Also, there are only two 5 volt pins, so if you wanted to power more than two control surfaces, you'll need to find another power source anyway. Luckily, taking power from the receiver is easy to do, only a little soldering required. When plugging into the receiver, it doesn't matter which channel you use, because we are only taking power, not signal. Finally, you would want to hook up some sensors, such as a gyroscope, an airspeed sensor, or an altimeter. I won't go into that in detail right now, but here's the camera I use for my computer vision autopilot system. It's a Raspberry Pi Camera 2. 
All right, the system is hooked up. Let's turn it on. First, turn on the transmitter. Now we plug in the receiver and the Raspberry Pi. Linux will take a few seconds to boot up and then the program will automatically run. When the program starts, it runs a surface check to let you know it has started. Okay, now I can move all three control surfaces, aileron, elevator, and rudder. I can flip this switch to start a recording. The system will record diagnostic information including the control inputs and the autopilot outputs. Turn off the recording and the plane wiggles its surfaces as confirmation. The diagnostic data is saved to the Raspberry Pi as a JSON file. This switch activates the autopilot. You can't see it doing anything right now because I don't have any sensors hooked up, but you can watch my earlier videos to see it in action. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more updates on this project, as well as other videos on programming, aviation, and robotics, be sure to subscribe.